Do me a favor and look around. What do you see? A microwave? A TV? A washing machine? Your phone? What do all these things have in common? While this may not be something you're readily familiar with, it's something you've most certainly used. All the things you saw in your room definitely have microcontrollers in them. But why is that? Where did they come from? And why are they so important? These are the questions that I'm going to attempt to answer so you realize the importance of them and see the beauty of what the microcontroller is and feel excited for the future. Because the way the microcontroller is headed, it's going to build us an elaborate and technologically advanced future. The Internet of Things, self-driving cars, smart homes are just a few of the exciting applications that are possible due to the microcontroller. And there's only more to come. Hi everybody, I'm James from Zygle Studios, and today we're going to talk about the invention of the microcontroller. The 50s was a very prosperous time for the United States. The post-war boom had sent consumers into a rage looking for the next best thing. The 50s also had a revolution in electronics. Typically, up to this point, transistors and tubes were used for decision-making electronics inside of devices. This was costly and took up a lot of space, so a lot of these electronics were very large, and in turn, not necessarily practical. But as consumers demanded more, the electronics industry started to change. In 1959, at Bell Labs, the MOSFET was invented. This was a new type of transistor that was not only smaller, but cheaper to manufacture. Now, electronic design could fit more into a smaller space. These designs started to get so complicated to the point that it was nearly impossible to manage switching circuits back and forth at a large scale. It became vastly more complicated and it needed more resources. Luckily, computer architecture was starting to come around the corner, and the first microcontroller was brought to light in the early 70s by Texas Instruments. From this point on, there would not need to be some type of application-specific integrated circuit for a particular product. You would be able to program a set of hardware that could do a multitude of different things for a very cheap price. This is why the microcontroller became so popular. The significance of the microcontroller really lies in the fact that you could fit more transistors into a smaller space in the board. And as time went on, more transistors were able to fit inside of the same board space, meaning there'd be more computing power for these processors. The microcontroller started to hold its own in the 80s, with the technology revolution that went on in the United States especially, and in the automotive industry in Japan. Before you know it, every single industry was touching the microcontroller, whether it be appliances, automotive, video games especially, and consumer electronics. By the 90s, the microcontroller was everywhere, and it was inevitable that it was going to be a part of the future. Custom architecture inside of video game systems utilized microcontrollers for bus communication and other peripheral interfaces, whereas appliances would use it to control motors or as simple as telling time. These still haven't changed, but now it's become vastly more complicated. The wonderful thing is that these problems have not gotten easier. In fact, they've gotten more complicated. But the need for embedded systems engineers is an all-time high. Trying to figure out how to manage all the tight resource scheduling inside of these microcontrollers while at the same time producing high-quality results and finished product. These challenges are why the embedded systems field is less sought after than other application level fields, especially in the level of computer science. While microcontrollers are much harder to program for, in my opinion, the results are much more satisfying. It's a far cry from flipping bits, that's for sure. The future of the microcontroller is extremely bright. Although there's millions of microcontrollers in existence now, more are sure to come and at a very large scale. Microcontrollers have taken a liking to RISC systems, or reduced instruction set computers. This means that there are less instructions that the central processing unit can do and in turn, there are less transistor switching circuits inside of the system itself. So this therefore means there's less current being applied to all the switching circuits at any given time. Since this is the case, that means that power draw is overall less. This is extremely important, especially since all the syncing and sourcing of battery circuits that are done now are all on immobile devices. These systems are able to run with less steam and therefore save battery life a little bit better. They can run cooler and more efficient. With that being said, there are cost savings there as well. As time goes on, things are becoming more and more attached through the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things allows for microcontrollers to essentially communicate with each other and provide a real-time status of what's going on. As things continue to progress in the future, microcontrollers still need to be in the picture to control things at a hardware level. And now peripherals exist to connect to the Internet. So being able to connect everything together into one central application is going to make our lives much easier. You may have heard of programming on a computer, but why not a microcontroller? Why isn't that as popular? 
I think the simplest fact is that a microcontroller is much harder to get your hands on. Even if it's an Arduino, the Arduino system has made programming on microcontrollers a little bit more popular, but in general, a real microcontroller is much harder to program for. The glitz and glamour of application programming doesn't typically apply inside of embedded systems. Embedded systems are a little bit more complicated. You have to have underlying knowledge of the hardware in order to operate on them, which means that electrical engineers have to work closely with the people writing the software in order for the system to work flawlessly. And yes, this means that code sometimes needs to look messy in order to perform at its best. The embedded systems programming world isn't the most glamorous one, but I believe it's the most rewarding. Seeing an embedded system work together flawlessly with precision, there's nothing quite like that. Just ask Boston Dynamics. When multiple embedded system teams come together and to create a robot, it is a marvelous sight and a feat of engineering. Ask the space shuttle teams at NASA that see their rockets launch off successfully. Ask any automotive manufacturer. Seeing their airbags deploy correctly, the air-fuel mixture in their engine control units applied correctly, and collision detection systems saving people's lives. These real-time systems are so important to today's world that we wouldn't be able to function without them. And to me, that's all the glitz and glamour you should ever need. I'm going to ask you one last time. Look around. All those things you see before you, your phone, your washing machine, TV, now you know about the secret world underneath your fingertips, known as the microcontroller, that makes all of these devices possible. I'm James from Zygo Studios, signing off.